Welcome to the Apprentice School's fourth annual SNAMI Boat Design Competition. This year, there were nearly 60 designs submitted for the contest from high schools all over the southeastern United States. Participants were put to the task of designing an all-steel boat from a single 5x10 panel of 1 8 inch steel. The rudder for these boats also had to be designed from a single piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. Entries could be of any design they chose, but had to meet existing requirements for payload, weight, freeboard restrictions, and other engineered criteria. Each design would be powered by an identical remote-controlled electrical outboard motor, which also had to be incorporated into the designs. Students were met with the challenge of solving complicated mathematical formulas that tested their ability to comprehend complex structural applications in ship design. The top four designs were chosen from all participants as best meeting the requirements of the contest, as well as presenting to the judges a creative and comprehensive design and construction presentation. Four high school teams met this criteria and went on to see their product produced by apprentice school professionals and tradesmen. Each participating team contributed to the building of their boats by monitoring each step of the construction right down to the paint and decals. Prior to the race day, each of the four boats had been tested and approved worthy for competition. On April 16, 2011, these four designs were brought to Lake Maury just inland of the James River and appropriately on the grounds of the Mariners Museum, a co-sponsor of the contest. Each school would battle for bragging rights and the title of 2011 winning shipbuilder. After a few last-minute details, each boat was christened by a member of their own design team. Once set in the water, motors and batteries were installed, and the remote controls were tested. Boats were trimmed out and readied for competition. Leaving only a quick review of the rules and a few particulars about each race. A time-turning ability run and a time-maneuvering run through a figure-eight style course. There was time to gather a comment or two regarding this competition. The trial that we did on Thursday was pretty good. It has a nice turning radius and it cuts the water pretty well, so we're excited. It, it looks good. Hopefully it'll run well. It did actually pretty well. Like it's not a, it's not too small, not too not too large, just nice in the water. Good. Uh, wind doesn't really affect it as much as uh, I guess it would a smaller boat. We've competed in the contest our school has for the last four years and we've won twice. So we just wanna uphold the <laughs> uphold the name. We, we try to make it as uh, slender as possible and as long as possible, that way we can get the high speed rate. I mean, we, we ended up, we started out and our ratios are going uh, like 2.5, 3, and we finally got a design that had a ratio of uh, speed up to 5, so we, we decided to stick with it. A payload test was the first hurdle, requiring each boat to maintain a minimum freeboard requirement. Then came the first of three races, which would determine the faster of the boats. Three, two, one. And here we go. We are underway. Trying to keep those boats straight. Oh, beautiful job. Beautiful job. And look at these boats turn. Who would have thought that? 17-foot boat went Willie's to turn that tight, but Deep Threat's not letting to get too far ahead of it. Wind is a factor. Wind can... Of the four boats, Jamestown High School's anchor management took first place, followed closely by the sleek lines of Wet Willie, a newcomer to the competition. The second race was the maneuverability race, testing the ability to turn quickly. Crimson Tide coming through. Like we have a finish there. Surprisingly, the 16-foot wet willy again surprised the crowd with quick and accurate turns. But anchor management pulled this one out of the bag and won their second race of the day. The final race was a bit more challenging for the boat and its pilot. Each boat had to navigate an outlying course and face their competition head to head. When it was all over, the leading boat was again anchor management, a clean sweep for Jamestown High School. 
But in this competition, coming in first was only part of the score. Next stop the tote board for final tallies for the entire project. Teams were awarded additional points for creativity, best presentation, best overall design, and of course, points for each race according to how they placed. Each of the boats were well represented and had their strong points, but Jamestown High School ended up with the highest score and winner of the 2011 SNAMI Boat Competition. For the year 2011, these future engineers and their teachers carry with them the SNAMI tradition of excellence in shipbuilding and the hope that this competition will steer these young adults into a career in marine engineering. Congratulations to all our participating teams for a job well done.